Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. The, the fact that they have to ask for more chairs is the best compliment I ever had in my life. It's really fantastic. <laughs> Um, it's, it's a special talk because there are many friends of mine here. I've been doing this before, but no, we're so many friends, so it feels very special. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about my work in, in, in a general way, about the method somehow I follow to do the, the shows in the, in the way I do it, in different kind of shows. So. I, I, I choose this image for, for like a f the first image because that, that's me when I was just a, a, a baby, a kid, and it's my father on the back, and he's pointing me something, uh, which I, I, don't, I don't remember what, but, but he's showing me. And w when I saw this image after 30 years, or maybe more, I saw it again, I realized this image says a lot of what I believe somehow art is. Art as a moment or as an instant of communication and unification somehow. Unification between somebody who has something or knows something or s just is looking at something and is showing to somebody else. And this is a, an amazing ability that we all have, we all human beings, and that make us completely different from the rest of the animals that are in the in the planet. And it, it is also, in my experience, or in the way I want to see it, is the essence of the practice of an artist. So this unification is, in a way, symbolic. It's putting two things, two halves, together. It's a unification that it's done with others, with friends, and with people that you work and with people that you don't even know, which is the people who goes to see the public. And it's a unification of myself with the rest. No, it's somehow my, my existence, inside and, and outside. So I'm going to talk about the method I follow and show you images constantly. And it's very simple. I work in a very site-specific way. I arrive to a place, and I start just walking and looking and I do everything outside. So when I start walking, I'm just searching for things that are going, that is, they are just reality, it's happening around. And this helps me a lot somehow to feel how is the society, how is the architecture, the space, a bit of the mentality, which things are important for a city or, a, or, or just a group of people. And it's also the most, it's my pleasure. It's really be outside living and looking. And I'm just taking notes, taking photographs, studying, recording. So once that I start to clarify a bit the elements around, this helped me to develop a thematic, a specific thematic to, to follow for that precise show. So I have never nothing planned. And the shows came out a couple of days before the openings, which is interesting because I am an artist that doesn't have a studio, doesn't have anybody helping in the back. I have zero organization around me. I'm very chaotic. I'm really messy. I'm always collecting things, carrying things with me. But it's a way to be free and to create very specific answers for the questions that every place somehow made me, made me do. The, some of these images that I select for this time are related to a show, the last show I just did in Rome, and I will talk about that at the end. But as you can see, it's very open, symbols, nature, coincidence, artworks, and it helps a lot to create a kind of a frame. This frame is, of course, what I can show you is just the images, but the frame is much more bigger. It has sounds, it has people around, it has the rhythmic and the time of a specific moment. So during this process, I have always a notebook in the pocket, and I'm taking notes, because it's a process of organization somehow. I, I like to start from this chaos, which is reality, and start to reorganize this reality into something, what it's going to be somehow the show. 
So it's really an existential issue. It's not about the work. It's me confronting myself and the moment. Then I collect things from really small things, as you can see on the palm of my hand that I always carry in my pocket, and then bigger things, objects uh, or parts of cars, uh, clothes, whatever that will be used for the show. So the, the objects somehow start to become something. This is, uh, this is the, like the moment when I start really thinking that I am doing an art piece. Before, it's just the process of study. So it's, I don't show those photos or my drawings so often. And when I do the pieces, as you can see, it's a very simple association of objects. I don't build things. I don't screw, glue, paste. I don't use nothing. It's just the simple position, fall, twist, something that comes from the structure of the object. So it's not really ready-made, because I'm not just passing one thing to the top of a pedestal and name it in a way. I'm really changing the object without, without really changing it, or, or changing the meaning of the object, putting together or close to other one. This was my first show in, in New York in 2006, and then this is the first show in London. And all of it, you can see, they're very simple faults, uh, moves, things to that doesn't damage. And I guess this is the main key of the work I do. Sometimes alone in the street, some other times, like in these pictures inside of a, of a show, like a performance. But it's a simple twist. And I did it because at the beginning I didn't have resources to do it. I have to do it in the street by myself, following a way. And then I realized that there was a whole entire meaning on the back of that. This is my first show in Zurich, Karma, pieces that I did here. So I, I realized that art works to open new windows of, of perception or understanding about what we are, our moment, our reality. So we are living in a world that is surrounded by objects that we just produce objects constantly and produce many things. And this also starts to affect us because we start to behave that machines that are just producing, 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 and we feel somehow the heaviness of produce. Instead of feel the joyness of exist and enjoy, because we are really not going very far away from this planet. We're just here for a moment, and that's it. So. The fact that we are surrounded by this, like this computer, amazing objects, made me realize that art had to be about something else in this moment. And this something else was not about huge productions, wasting crazy amounts of money to put one thing, pretty, ugly, kitsch, sophisticated, minimal. But it was just more about sharing this kind of invisible energy somehow that it's around us all the time and that make us exist, coexist, understand, and make us so special as human beings. So this was a show, and I pause it because it was this kind of simple relation of objects. This show in New York was done following the different points like chakras of the body, because I also feel that when I'm working, I involve different parts of my body. It's not, such a, it's not just a rational, conceptual work. It has a lot of concept in the back, but I think that for touch, another human being, you have to touch it as, in as much levels as possible. So the mind is just one, but then you have also to play with others. And then I create reference to the body, as you can see, using the objects, especially the tights, because they are directly related to the body and to the body in, in a very strong tension. It could understand it as a first level, as a torture to a body. And because I'm Mexican, I'm male, they always tell me, but you are a macho Mexican because you torture the female body. And I say, well, first of all, I've never tortured a woman in my life, not even a cat. It's a, the only animal I kill is the mosquitoes, and just when they are inside of the room where I'm sleeping. So 
I, I really, it's not about that. It's more about the fragility of what I feel we are, because we all are male-female mix, and everything rules by this duality. So it's just a portrait of what I feel we're living, this super stretch tension that keeps us all together in this massive way, because we are a huge community of humans. And then I start to create reference to other shows. So this show that you're looking right now, it's uh, related to the myth. I always work with reference to uh, Greek myths or Aztec myths or any kind of myth because all of them are linked and they are all the same in all the planet. And this is related to the string of life, to the three Moiras or, or Parkas, the, the gods who one made this tree, the other measures, the other cut it, and that's a life. And I did it because then I started a sequence of shows that are all linked. And I like to keep this during my process of work. Every show is related to, to other. So this is the develop of this kind of character telling a kind of intimate story. And then the character exists in other shows. As you can see, they're very simple objects. Then that way of working jumps into this show, which was done in Zurich. And now the myth is the myth of Arachne, who is this arrogant uh, girl who makes tapestry, and she feels that she's so great that she's better of the God, than the gods. So she has kind of fight with Athene, and she's torn into spider. And I like to do, do this show because I feel a lot of arrogancy in what we do in the art world. And I feel that we are somehow so focused into ourselves instead of be focused into what is going on outside. But I thought it was making sense to do it. This is a different representation of the same myth, other representation. And this is fantastic because when, when you play with things that have 3,000 years of history or more, then you can really place yourself into your moment because the others help you to create your own position in time. So art is not about just innovation. It's not about what is new. It's about what is somehow universal in our context, in our history, in our body. And that helps to be placed in our time. This is uh, another myth, the myth of Danae, that you will see different representations. And you can see the evolution of the way of thinking and feeling of our society. I love this one, which comes from Rembrandt. And it's really impressive, because the other ones that you could see is a very sexual way of seals coming at night as a golden light. But this one is much more rational, and she is the mind. She wants to move to him. She has an intention. She has, she's connecting to the light, but not in a physical way, in a, in a rational, intellectual, it's enlightened. So it's a very modern way to conceive the myth. And it's fantastic the, that he did it at that time. So this is my version using all photographs of Ross Mayer and putting its only light on top of it. Uh, this is maybe one of the most complex projects i ever done. It's called The Question of Desire. And it's with 12 magazines folding just the pages of the magazines. I create 365 images, everyone linked to one year. So it works as a sequence. It's a visual novel that describes life and at the same rhythm of, of a calendar. So we have the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter of life. And it ends up in a book that the book, as you can see, opens all of it in a cycle. So it has no beginning of end. And it has these diagrams who explain somehow what I was following in a kind of reduced way. And then it was shown in winter two in 2012, like this, like one continuous piece. This piece helped me a lot to understand how we are moving or how we are changing in order to start from zero and arrive to certain age. And what does it mean to be in a different chapter of life? Then I'm showing you this installation that was done in Paris. 
because it was the year when I started working in a big, big scale and creating shows simultaneously in different places. And this one was very complex because it's the entire show created with one element, which is just the windshield. And it was, it was called Migratory Butterflies. It was somehow a closing chapter because the whole ch show is done to create light, just like, just like this. And symbolically, because I'm following symbols in all my shows, the fact to arrive to a butterfly was the starting point for a bigger project. It was to say, okay, I start a metamorphosis, and now I'm gonna start to show many different aspects of myself and of my work. So the next show that I'm doing was just now in September <laughs> in Rome, and it's called Luster Butterfly, and it's the butterfly after the metamorphosis. So for coming from the object that I didn't damage, now I'm really working in a completely different situation, and I start a project that it's called the Contemporary Comedy, and it, make, it involves the creation of many artists. So it's me, alone, working with somebody else, but creating many artists, like a big novel of artists, and they are just creating things, and it's all whole fiction, but it's, it's at the same time a portrait of the whole process and the scene of an artist. So this is the first the first uh, show, and you can see I'm painting, I'm, I'm doing this kind of figurative uh, sculptures in collaboration, which are kind of a decadent pop, and, and it's a whole open new thing. So sorry, the interventions are done by other people? They're like, all these works are collaborations with other people? Yes. Okay. People you meet? People I meet, people that, friends, and at the same time, we are creating like fiction situations. So it's, it's a whole, it's a very free project. And you, I'm showing you now somehow images that were taken during that process and that made me go in the direction that I was going. So how coming back to to the city and the environment, because all the decisions that I take were based on all what I was finding. The fact of playing with graffiti. And, and this collaboration, creating ob other objects, also somehow I allowed myself to be out of this not touching, not fixing, not painting, not you know, very, very, pure way of working, so I'm doing things that are completely uh, free, somehow, in order to reinforce the other side. So here you can see somehow notes, the notes that I was doing in, in Rome. And yeah, it's, it's, it's like an obsession every day, just thinking, working, working, uh, taking notes, studying, and that's it. That's the way I do it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I I tried to, to go a bit fast because my my intention was to to be more in a kind of conversation, very friendly, very open. So now that you have a bit of an idea, we can just talk or discuss about any kind of each question or whatever you want to, to ask or, or talk about it. Uh, it's super. I have a question. Um, when you work with the mythologies, um, the, the last one you showed, I forgot the name. Um, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, with the rainbow shine. Mm -hmm. Was it a projection, a photography? No, no, it's totally natural. It was, I mean, at the end, the piece is just a simple photograph in the same format that the original Ross Mayer photograph. Yeah. And it's just the light getting inside of the apartment here in Zurich. It's a rainbow of light. And then I place the black and white photograph on the back, trying to get the light in the direction I wanted. And then I just did the photo. And then, so the and then it's printed, yeah. 
Yeah, I, do, I don't use any kind of Photoshop or anything to fake because for me the important thing is not the result so much, but it's the situation. The situation to capture a rainbow with this photograph, it's much more beautiful, let's say, or, or poetic, or, or, or than being the computer hours trying to make a fake effect. Because it's about what I'm living, no? Like, and communicate that. So, it's okay. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking maybe it was an installation. We put the light somehow. Uh, yeah. The observer could see the picture original. And it can. It can be also projected for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. Does the so yeah, um, the uh, like the last phase in the work? Is it because you felt that that the thing that that your methodology became a kind of constraint or a kind of dogma and that you had to like... Yes, but somehow, yeah, I mean, you're right. What I was... There is also, when, when you're doing something for yourself in your house, very intimate, it's something, and when you're really exposing that thing and working in shows and moving around, it's something totally different. And then when you belong to a system, which is a, the market, and, and you're producing and producing, there's a moment that somehow you're forced to follow the line that everybody knows you do. So you're becoming a kind of a product. And the way I work is actually to don't do products. Because products are done by machines somehow now. And, and I, have, I wanted to put a complete different philosophy or concept in the back of my work. So I do things that if you move them somehow, they disappear. And you can keep them f as long as you want. They have that way of being built. So when that way of being built was already becoming a product, accepted, I thought, okay, now I'm going to start a whole new concept uh, and, and, and play with it, creating this. So just, just for that. And I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> it's really so because you can share like yeah share you, at the end you can share you can you can share also your existence which is also very nice oh like if there's something that i was not so clear or, or you want me to be explain a bit more also otherwise we go for drinks <laughs> Yes, when you showed, uh, I saw first your pen with the faces. Mm -hmm. Yes, and for me, it was really the uh, first time I saw something that you have this uh, big kind of change. And yeah, I did. Work on the object more than the other. And, and work in a, in a figurative way yes. somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, and it's also building, no? I'm doing a mm -hmm. sculpture, mm -hmm. modulating. It's, it's actually, that's why that's the first. Because those cans that you saw with the face that will come down, they're done by an artist that is John Brown. So it's not me. Inside of this comedy, it's John Brown. Mm -hmm. And he already had his solo show in a vitrine in a project space in Rome. So it's me working, but supposed not to be me. And I don't care if people know that it's me, because actually mm -hmm. it's about that. So I have to follow and to work inside of his own rules. and. Yeah, it, it, it's also because it's part of a longer proce process and a longer project. That's how, why I start showing him as the first artist, because he's wearing a mask or putting a mask on top of an object that I already worked before. So it means something in a bigger scale. And, but it's completely different. It's something completely, yeah. Some of my galleries, they didn't knew that I could do some plasticine work. <laughs> Uh, so. um, could you explain again how that one, the show of the comedy, mm -hmm. how is the comedy exactly? It's called Contemporary Comedy. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to end up in a publication. It will be like a book with images of all the works, all the show, all the artists, real or fiction artists, and many te uh, texts around a lot. So it's it start like it's a comedy because it's structured in this, it, like in the 
format of a comedy. It's, it's, uh, it has characters and they do things and the idea is to control the develop of these characters but also let it very open to what happened. So if a gallery invite me to do a show with one of these artists that I'm creating, it will be fantastic because that, that open a chapter for this character. So it's like writing a novel of the life of these artists that only exist by the work they do, but I cannot control the way it goes. It's a very chaotic uh, system for, for a project, so I cannot control it. But at the end, uh, it will end up in something that I hope it makes sense. And that will be the book. And inside of that, I'm very free just to do and go in, the, in any kind of direction. The project somehow will just follow it and it will show somehow what I have to do. It's not a tragedy because a tragedy will mean a completely different direction of, 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 uh, of to follow, no? So I prefer to show, to do a kind of comedy. Um, so I'm not sure if I got the right. So you have collaborations with fictional... I have artists, collaboration with, no, with the collaborations with... The real people. With real people, the people. Yeah. people yeah. that you invented. It's exactly, and then, then we together invent you artists. You and the real person exactly. together fictional Exactly, character. yeah. And there's also collabos that is you and you, but the second you has a real name. Exactly, like yes, exactly. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is about that. It is about creating many, many, many layers. And at the end, what you have is the work. Yeah. And the work, I mean, the work that I do, I do it with the intention that the work talks by himself. Yeah, like questioning the authorship. Yeah, it's... Uh, the authorship doesn't matter too much. It's exactly. Important. And it's also breaking the system a bit, no? Because when you buy a piece, you buy also a name, and you buy many, many yeah. things. And here, if you buy it, because it really you want it, no, or you, or you get it, or you something, and also... It's also a bit the thing why you broke this rule of not, like, um, working with spray, or like... Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just collect stuff, so it's the same thing, like, they would buy you as a product in not changing too much on the object. Exactly. And then, like, you break this... Exactly, yeah, yeah. And, and the idea was to open a space and to break, break, break more, yeah, yeah. more, more inside, until there's yeah. nothing. <laughs> but in the beginning, the idea was that the objects that you use can go back to their original state. Yes. So, so what I do as Martin inside of this project, it's always the way I always work. It's I, I do things that can't go back. So because I'm one of these characters somehow, <laughs> but the others are free to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. So I behave into my own process, and, and it, it's it's a bit. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> but, <laughs> But it's about that somehow. It's a and uh, yeah, it's it's a. Tr I mean, for me at the beginning, I don't know. I, I I like to start something, and it doesn't matter if it takes me many years. Like the project of the book that you saw, in order to get one image that represents a day inside of a whole sequence, it took me four years of work from the first day I did it until the publication and the show. And when, when you're inside of a system of shows, there's no time. You have to be in a hurry all the time to do a show because there's a solo show this month and then there's another show, somebody else in the next, or two, or two. no, it's, it's, it's a bit complicated. And because I really like to keep the quality in the back from the, quali the conceptual quality somehow. I take my time to develop these long projects, but I have to organize them by chapters. So it's like Balzac used to write, no? Doing just every week, like, here is, here is, here is, but trying to make something that makes sense in a, in a, in a long, and that, that's it. So you said it was just very site specific? <coughs> yes. So you also have your own, own like, it's, everything is your own, but you have some other projects going on, like this book for four years, which is not, that, that's why I was working with the magazines, because it's something that I can do in a complete, it's abstract, it's outside of the reality. No? And I could carry the magazines with me. So there were 12 magazines, I can take them. It was not so, so I have to manage this way to, to keep going. But also going. if you would have no more invitation, you would still keep on working. Yeah, no, I started working <laughs> much better. I was doing this with no, even an idea of what it was contemporary art system in the scale it is. And that's why I do it, because I do it since the beginning. 
like this <coughs> with not even many resources, no, just, just doing it. Now it's great because it's much more easy somehow. It has a completely different responsibility. It's in a completely different level of stress. But I'm quite lazy, so it helps me to, <laughs> to push. And yeah, it's a strange way of being working without working. So. Uh, can I ask another question? Of course. Um, uh, I was wondering about your um, approach towards objects because during the talk I had the feeling that there's there's like a really strong dualistic viewpoint in it that it's like me towards these objects or humankind towards animals or or like and I was just wondering if you sometimes not feel that all these things just kind of like come together on a horizontal plane where where you also become an object or the object becomes a subject and starts talking to you or how do you always feel this like contradiction or does it sometimes like become interchangeable these, these things? Mm. But you mean like like uh, it's just or yeah. No, no. Or just, 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 just like, just sorry, simply put, just like the object-subject division. Like you sometimes feel that this becomes interchangeable. That yes, of course it, it is. Yeah, 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 totally. It yeah. sometimes the same objects work work in many different pieces, and the subject is spread in many different objects or different shows. And uh, but I mean more as as you as a subject, like you as a person towards towards you working with this object, like more on a philosophical uh -huh. level, like how. Because I feel that you make a strong distinction between what is an object and, and what is what is me as a person dealing with that object. There's like a big gap between those things, or is there not? No, I think there's not. There is, uh, of course, the object is not a representation of myself. Somehow, I'm not using to recreate. I'm just, or maybe I'm just creating a way of being towards the, the manipulation of the object. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm really linked. To, to doing it, it's a, I mean, it's really a way of controlling my life somehow. It's a, it's a method to organize my life because we can organize our existence through so many things, you know, religion, social aspects, fashion. It gives us some kind of an order that we follow. And in this case, I'm just following the order that I interpret from the environment that I have to follow put it in a very precise moment subject. So I'm always very concentrated in, in what I'm doing. Do you think you could make a show in the tone area? Tell us a little bit about your background. You grew up and you're from Mexico. Yes. <coughs> yeah, I, I'm from Mexico City, which is also a huge uh, complex system. And of course, that that affect the way I work, absolutely, no, I guess. There's, there's not a big main truth for all of us. You just do what you have to do from the situation you came from. And in that case, Mexico was great for me because it's still quite disconnect of so many things that are happening in, in Europe and in the States. <coughs> So it's a completely different reality and, and you don't feel so much the pressure to be inside of this system somehow, no? even in the school, you're not educated so to, to be, which is it's somehow a pity because then you need to learn it. But on the other side, you just do it because you wanted to do it. And in a city with 24 millions, whatever you do, nobody will pay attention. So you can kill your sister, burn the house, put it down, whatever, and nobody will care. Five blocks after, it will be like, yeah, whatever. So it's a complete different environment. So you really develop different things. And it also helped me a lot to move in the cities where I'm working, because most of them are much more organized and easy to, <laughs> to deal with. But um, now you live in Europe, or where do you live? Hmm? Where do you live now? No, I'm, I'm always traveling to... So you don't have a no, no, no. My fixed home could be Mexico City, and, and in order to spend more time there, one year, and a half, somehow, almost two years ago, I create a project space that is called Lulu, together with a friend curator, Chris Sharp. And this was an excuse to 
be more in Mexico, to spend more time and what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. We have some storage somewhere for all your fund objects in Mexico City, a huge hall which is fund objects. No, it's crazy because at the beginning I had a studio with many things, but now that I'm doing shows, there's not even it's time. Sold. It's just going, not even <laughs> sold. That would be fantastic. But it's, it's, uh, it's just I have to improvise. I, I, I left Mexico in May, and I thought that I would be back in maybe one month, one month and a half. And I'm still in Europe traveling and I did a show in Rome that I didn't knew that I will do it when I left Mexico. So I'm just changing directions all the time. And, and of course, I, if I found something that I really love, I, I take it with me. Sometimes I just do the piece or the photo in the street and it's just go. It's about really let it go, no? It's not such a possessive method it's it's a uh, it's a moment and, and then i can develop a concept that I, I like and if i found good other pair of good shoes that work for that i can do it later it's not not a problem like so since you work so size specifically every exhibition you completely yes totally 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 yeah it's not really repeated um, I can, as you can see, I can use the tights in many different ways to create different shows, um, or the windshields or something. Yeah, yeah, they, they are not. And that's why it's so, so somehow complex when you have to do different things in different places at the same time, because then it gets uh, heavy weight. So all the objects are mostly out of this town you're exhibiting? Totally. You this, 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 all this show, for example, I, I did it all in Rome. I found everything in Rome. Because I, have, I found the thematic in Rome. I found the objects. The objects helped me to develop, to understand the thematic. So it's everything somehow linked and, and affected. And then you leave it in Rome. Hmm? And then you leave them in Rome. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically they just book you, and then you spend <laughs> one month in Rome, and uh, you create something. Yes, exactly. I, I, I spent, it was a beautiful no? two months in Rome, and it's, it's actually much, much cheaper than shipping things, no? it's, um, it's much more, and, and then I was just working there, like that, exactly, and that's the way I do it. Somehow, for some projects, I need help of somebody who can start collecting something, in a, because when it's at the same time many things, it's not so easy to do it. But even the objects that I get, they're objects that somehow I can manipulate by myself with no machines, with no, it's really related to my scale, my, my body, and yeah, it's a. What does it mean to travel a lot? It means uh, you make artist museums or you have enough money to travel around and to walk? I have enough friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, yeah. really, I have enough friends. At the beginning it was very difficult because I didn't have enough money, enough friends, and no residence or nothing. But then now I'm always just sharing and spending with friends. And I did a couple of residences, but but no, it's uh, and of course now I have I can also afford to to travel and to stay and everything in, in an easy way. But it's all, all almost always with with friends. And the galleries are friends also. All the galleries that I work with, they're really close friends of mine. It's not just a professional relation. So did I get it right that when you did an exhibition and there is finish art and it's done, the objects, you sell some of them and the objects remaining, what, what, what are you doing with them? Some of them, if they are easy to manipulate, they, for example, they just get unfold, package, and the gallery keep it. If the show was in a gallery, they keep it. If the show it's in the museum, it disappears. Or some of them goes like this, some elements go to the gallery, but many of these big installations that you saw, this one that, that you saw with the four doors that, that were places as tables, those doors were taken for the apartment that was right in front for two months, and then they will need it back. So we used them, and then they would bring, and it was amazing because I was thinking in the exactly that kind of doors, and they came, so we like, wow. So we finished the show, we bring it back. Uh, so at the end, what is storage is not so big, and, and it, yeah, it's, it's so many things just disappear. That's why the, the notebooks are so important for me, 
to keep notes, to keep a trace, no? to follow a track, to, to keep my mind focused, focused, focusing. So, because the show doesn't really exist as a physical thing until the very, very, very end. So I don't really know. I know what I'm showing, but it's not, it's not like when you lose your wallet and you're like, ah, oh, I, I, I lost it or I lost my sweater. It's a brown sweater, no? You know what you're searching. You have an image. When I'm doing the show, I don't have an image clear. So I have to discover it, I have to understand, I have to create it. And it came really, I use as much as the time I have. So this is really interesting since, um, for instance, when I go to an exhibition and then I say to a friend, yeah, I saw this exhibition, it was really great. And sometimes, sometimes they say, oh no, I missed it, but I'm going to visit it well, next month, it's going to be in Paris, so I'm going to see it. Yes, for sure. Yeah, maybe some elements. Yeah, yeah. No, no, for sure not. No, no. Once that is done in a way, it will readapt. It also happens with with collectors, no? That they they have a piece, and they they are also very free to do it in the way they they want it, no? They they, they can arrange it in the way, and and sometimes they have to say they have amazing ways. <laughs> it's really great, no? Like you. Uh-huh. You take it apart and the collector cannot tell you from the state it was shown. Or like what m mostly happened is that I go back, for example, with the blinds that I twist mm -hmm. or with the tires inside of the others, and I redo it the piece. You redo it? For I just redo it. It's like a performing thing. So I retwist the blind, and it, com it will be not exactly the same. But sometimes if the house is better for a different situation because it's a corner or something and the piece <laughs> looks much better in a different way, I just do it different. And if they agree, it's perfect, no? It's because it's not about the product, it's about the moment and, the, and what happened. Sometimes if they really want to have that thing, it's okay. So I try to redo it in, in the same way. And it's how never... important is it for you that the object is found or bought? Mm, sorry? Like, how, is it important if you find the object in the street or is you buy it, like I, I guess you buy these tights. You bought the tights. Uh, well, for example, the, 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 these rubber tights, ah, the tights, the, the first tights, they came from my girlfriend. <laughs> and then, at the beginning, it was very hard to get this, this object. <laughs> <laughs> and then, slowly, because then from the gallery, they were also sometimes arriving, like, yeah, we have many tights for you. And they were like, wow. But from the system, the intern, the galleries, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> And uh, so it's much more easy now. But they are found objects. And in some cases, for example, when I did the windshields that I need many, we went for uh, research and I had you no know, like assistance to, to get many. But they are all windshields that were used and they were cracked in an accident. And that's what we take. They're not new ones. And it's not that I'm against of the, of the new one, but I like the, the history, you know, mm -hmm. the story, the story on the back. And the first windshield that I use, I found it in the street, and I just carry it to the studio, and so. Does it sometimes smell in your show? In your show? Is, is what? It smell? Yes. Yeah, it smells sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, no, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, I remember I did once a piece that it was one of these rubber inner tubes, and it smelled so bad. We presented in Fritz that it was really, really strong, yeah. And they're dusty. Many of the objects are dusty. It's uh, there are different values, no? On the I don't mind if uh, that's, for example, ah, uh, it pass. No, oops. <laughs> Where? Oh, uh, well, I just let it go. <coughs> I just wanted to show you something because this this big wall is just many canvases with the tight. I installed that piece, and then I went after two days of working and understanding, and then I went for lunch, and when I came back, the room was empty. I was like, fuck, what happened? And then the entire piece was pulled by the tights and boom, came to the floor. And I was like, fuck, like, and now I have to redo it again. But it was much more powerful because all the tights were stretched and broken. It was really, it was the last 
touch to, to, to do it well. So it's, these things happen and then they change. You just have to be open to say, okay, it's that. because the galleries, can you imagine for a gallery that just before the opening, the entire piece is <laughs> <laughs> Okay, take it easy, don't, don't worry. It's a, <laughs> something good will come out. It's just about including you know, all the aspects of life. You mentioned twice or three times that you have to understand when you're there. What do you have to understand? I always ask the same question to me. What is this thing that I have to understand? And at the end, looking to my notebooks, I realize I've been doing the same for so long. And this is the beauty of doing these notes, because it's like a spiral. You just move in an obsession. So I guess it's myself somehow. It's, uh, it's existence in the only way that I can understand it. And that, that's it. Notes are descriptive, or do they interpret things? They interpret things. You mean for? Or like that the notes you make, are they descriptive? Like do they describe things, or do you interpret them at the same time when you're? Sometimes I don't even understand what I'm doing. After, after months, I check it out or years, and I say, what uh, was this? It's supposed to have a logic, but I don't. So uh, that's why I have to redo it again, I guess. <laughs> it's too <laughs> so it's really obsessive. And I, I try to interpret it, but at the end, I realize it's not clear enough or something. So I have to go back and go back and go back. And the titles from the pieces, they are derived from the notes? Or yes, yeah, 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 always. Yeah, yeah, they, they are part of the process. It's much more easy because at the beginning, I was not paying attention to that. And it was taking me hours to find the right title of, of an object because I knew it, but I was like, ah, see that. <laughs> so now it's just part. Of, it's a very organized method. You, you can see in the notebooks that I really follow kind of, because everything outside is so chaotic and so open and with no structure that at least in the notes, I try to be very organized. It's what keeps me in, in, in the center. Because like those notebooks, for example, because like those notebooks doesn't seem very big. You <laughs> seem write a lot. Yes. And you also travel a lot. Then like, is there anything in your backpack? Or how do you manage it? To have the notebooks? Yeah. They used to be bigger, but then it's much more complicated to travel. So I end up having them on the side of my pocket. So they're always in my pocket. And then I miss them all the time because, of course, I cannot travel with so many notes. So. And that's why I start taking photos of them, to have them in the computer and, and remember them. So, um, because yes, of course, sometimes I have notes or something that I know it's there, or it's just a note of a book, or, but you cannot have all that together. I, I learned, for example, from, from Christoph to take photos with the iPhone of every single thing that I was interested, in, even if it's a title, a subject, and it helps a bit to say, oh, yes, because then you're far away and you need to find you have to develop your own technique, no, to put, uh, to, to to do it, especially if you are so badly organized like I am. It's uh, it's a challenge. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you have to understand the notes. Um, 